Good afternoon, and welcome to Naples United Church of Christ in Naples, Florida. My name is Dawson Taylor, and I have the privilege of serving as senior minister. And no matter if you're joining us via live stream, Facebook Live, or have downloaded our podcast, we are grateful to have you worshiping with us. Today, we begin the season of Lent by observing Ash Wednesday. Lent is the season of 40 days leading to Easter. It doesn't count Sundays because those are little Easter's. Lent is a penitential season where we are invited to reflect on our lives and our journey of faith. Many people give something up during Lent that they feel comes between them and God, but I often invite people to take something on that they feel enriches their spiritual life. So either way, we invite you to find ways to deepen your spiritual walk during these 40 days. Ash Wednesday is called that because historically the church has made the sign of the cross in ashes, either on the forehead or perhaps the wrist, using the traditional words of the church, from dust you have come and to dust you shall return, reminding each of us of our humanity and our mortality. Like so many things since about one year ago when the COVID-19 pandemic struck the United States, this is a different kind of Ash Wednesday and certainly a different kind of Lent. As a church, we are observing the theme of rooted this year during Lent, reminding us that despite everything around us feeling so, I don't know, out of control, we are rooted in our faith, in our church, and in Jesus Christ. Earlier today, we invited our church to come and receive a bulb that has been planted to nurture it and to watch it bloom later this spring as a reminder of how we are rooted. And in that rootedness, we too have the opportunity to bloom through the love and grace of God. Throughout Lent, I want to invite you each Wednesday at noon for our Lenten midweek meditation services I also want to invite you each Wednesday evening at 5 p.m. for our clergy roundtable as we discuss our Lenten study book, Deep Rooted in Christ, The Way of Transformation by Joshua Chunmin Kong. And each Sunday morning, of course, for worship at 10 a.m. as we reflect on six different scriptures where Jesus or one of the prophets talked about the importance of being rooted. I also hope that you'll stay tuned next week for an exciting announcement regarding our Easter Sunday worship plans. Indeed, as a rooted congregation, let us center our hearts and minds as we prepare for worship on this Ash Wednesday. What wondrous love is this, O my soul, O my soul? What wondrous love is this, O my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to Dreadful curse for my soul. For 
and as we gather on this Ash Wednesday. Let us join our hearts as we hear these words for our call to worship. The season of Lent calls us to journey along the edge, to anticipate the final trip to Jerusalem. Lent calls us to the cutting edge, when the wheat once rooted falls to the ground and new life comes forth. Lent not only invites us to give up something, but also invites us to participate in the mystery of God with us. By your grace, call us from grief into gladness, despair into hope, estrangement into right relations with each other and with the earth. Amen. Throughout scripture, there are various passages that refer and point us to how Jesus prayed his way through Lent. Now, we wouldn't know it as Lent necessarily when reading scripture, but we see how Jesus turned his heart toward God through prayer and demonstrated and modeled that for the disciples and for us. And so in that spirit, will you join your heart with mine in prayer? Let us pray. Loving and grace-filled God, as we gather on the start of this Lenten journey, we are thankful and we are mindful of all that you have given us. We are also thoughtful about the responsibility that comes with all that we have been given. As we enter this season, O oh God, if we are honest, it feels as though Lent last year never really ended. Help us with the incompleteness, grief, anxiety, and disappointments of 2020. Empower us with ways to find closure and completeness, perhaps where none was offered. In this season of penitence and reflection, hold before us our privilege. Not to be weaponized or used as guilt, but to sensitize us to the needs of others and our absolute ability to tangibly do something about it. In a season of blooming color and lushness, may the abundance around us remind us daily of your abundance. May it inspire in us ways of abundance thinking. May scarcity and anxiety-filled mentality be diminished. God of grain and harvest, nourish rich soil so that in our rootedness we may soak rich nutrients and water from the ground beneath us. And in that nourishment, may we be convicted to care for the earth that you have entrusted to our careful watch. Bless especially those who wander with no purpose, who starve with no physical or spiritual nourishment, who ache with no hope for cure, who weep with no hope, and who question with no answers. As we turn our faces to the cross of Jerusalem, we lift this prayer in the name of the one whom you sent to show the ways of justice, peace, and inclusion, the one we call Christ. And we lift together the prayer that he taught by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear now these words from the 17th chapter of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. May our still speaking God bless to us the hearing of these ancient words. Amen.
Will you join your hearts with mine in prayer? Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we continue to give you thanks for the gift of this day. And we ask, O oh God, that in this time of worship, that you would speak either through me or in spite of me. But that above all else, we would hear with clarity what it is that you say to us this day. All of this we trust and we ask in your many names. Amen. Someone once wrote that there are basically two kinds of people in the world. Those who divide people into two kinds of people and those who do not. The prophet Jeremiah says in our reading for today that there are indeed two kinds of people. One kind the prophet calls cursed, the other the prophet calls blessed. The life of the cursed the prophet compares to a low brush in the desert. Inhabiting a parched and desolate wilderness. The life of the blessed, on the other hand, the prophet compares to a tree planted by the waters that spreads her roots out by the river. Her leaf is green, her fruit is bountiful. Two kinds of people. One is meaningless, without hope or promise. For the other, life is purposeful, rich, pregnant with promise, full of hope and good cheer. Two kinds of people. To which group do you belong? If you would like to belong to the first group, here's what you must do. Absolutely nothing. If you want to be like a low bush in the desert, inhabiting a parched and desolate wilderness, if you want your life to be meaningless, empty without hope or promise, all you have to do is sit there. You do not have to join an organization, read a study manual, pay initiation fees, or exercise a single physical, mental, or emotional muscle. You do not have to go on a diet or make any well-intentioned resolutions or care about anything or anyone in the entire world except yourself. If you think about it, it's relatively easy to live in a desert. All you must do is withdraw into yourself. And honestly, what's easier than that? Make up your mind that you are the only person in the world that matters. Your appetites, your pleasures. Spend your life looking out for number one. Turn your back on any relationship or reality that requires sacrifice, patience, generosity, or love. Continually put up your guard against anything that might have a commitment in it, or dare we say, a cross. It is easy to be a low bush in the desert. Live only for today. Believe in nothing that you cannot touch or taste or measure in a test tube. Shut your mind or your heart to any possibility that there might be more to life than which can be seen with the physical eye. Allow your mind to be filled with negative assumptions about life and death, 
right and wrong, meaning and mystery. The desert life is the easiest kind of existence available to us, for it requires nothing of us. I'm convinced that's why millions of people today live where they do. In the middle of a parched and desolate wilderness. Two kinds of people. If you want to belong to the first group, you need do nothing. And I actually think that a lot of people prefer the wilderness. We believe that happiness can be bought. We believe in our society today, which tells us that we can use other people and ignore their needs and concerns. We live with certainty that we must eat, drink, and be merry. Or tomorrow, we will die. What it does not tell us is the gospel. What it does not tell us is the good news. That tomorrow does not have to be about death and dying, but it can be about eternal life. About life with abundance. You see, if you want to join that other group, that second group, that group that is like a tree planted by the water with its roots spreading out to the river, with its green leaves and bountiful fruits, there are steps that one must take. For in God's word there is no harvest to be reaped unless a seed has been rooted. There are no profits without investment. If you want a strong body, I'm told, you have to exercise. If you want an educated mind, you must study and learn. Doing nothing produces a desert. If we want more fruitful and productive lives, there are some things that you must do. First, we must learn to trust God. It's not enough to simply worship or honor God or even fear and believe in God. Our lives will be barren deserts until we learn to fully trust God. Peter Marshall once wrote, I know that God is far more willing to do things for us than we are to ask him. And that is the great mystery. Knowing what I do about God's power and God's willingness to help, I keep on struggling with myself and trying to work things out in my own way when he could save me all the anxiety and do it better and easier. I believe God is made sad at the sight of so many of us trying to work things out for ourselves. He longs to help us, but we won't let him. We won't ask him. Lest we forget that Jesus told the woman at the well that he himself was the source of those life-giving waters. If you know the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. 
Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. You see, God has rich possibilities for our lives. God can create a new person within us. And Lent provides a perfect season for deep transformation and rich growth. Earlier today, we invited our members and friends to come and to receive a bulb that had been planted. And we are inviting you during the season of Lent to nurture that bulb and to watch it blossom and bloom later this spring. You see, I believe that this last year has been a year where many of us have felt like that bulb. Deep within soil, dark, uncertain of where the future is taking us. But I also believe that 2021 will be a year where we will see so much around us blossom and come to full fruition. It might have felt to some of us that God was not at work in the year 2020. Just like it might feel that way when one looks at a plant where the bulb is still underground with no blossom yet. But like that bulb, we are rooted deep. We are rooted in our faith we are rooted in our church, and we are rooted in Jesus Christ. And because of that great gift, as we begin this Lenten journey on this Ash Wednesday, we are rooted in the hope of Easter.
receive now these words of blessing. Let us go forth into the world indeed as rooted people to begin this Lenten journey. And let us go forth from this place to find a self you can live with, a cause you can live for, and a redeemer whose love you can live into. And let us go in peace. Amen.